Well, as you can see, we've come inside to the classroom because this is a little bit more controlled environment where we can film quietly and not have any outside distractions. Um, the remainder of this tape deals specifically with the phosphate and nitrate testing groups. So once again, make sure you have your journal available so that you can take notes on the following instructions, as well as some notes that you might want to take regarding the background information of phosphates and nitrates. Because the last two parts of this tape will deal specifically with that. Your responsibilities not only as a water quality monitor, but also your responsibilities as becoming an expert in the area of phosphates and nitrates. Phosphates and nitrates information can be found in the field manual for water quality monitoring. We have this book on reserve in the library, several, like a class set on reserve where you can go there and check it out and keep it in the library. So you'll probably have to do that during your free period. Um, go into the library, ask for this manual, check it out. They don't let you take it out of the library, but it's on reserve there and you can collect information regarding background information on phosphates and nitrates. What are phosphates and nitrates? How are they important? Um, what are the sources of these as pollutants in our environment? What they do to the water quality in terms of how they diminish the water quality? And uh, what can be done perhaps to even prevent them or what are the sources for them that can be stopped so that too many phosphates and nitrates don't get in the water? So this is kind of like our little, you know, textbook that's not part of our um, course curriculum textbook so it's a little supplemental thing and so you don't have to buy it we have it on reserve in the library we'll also have several copies of this in the classroom so if that you want to check something out or refer to it you'll have it available what I'd like you to do is take that information and put it into your rivers uh, journal so that you have a synopsis of those notes in your journal. You're going to need that information for um, writing your formal lab write-up later after you've collected your data and giving presentation to the class about the results that you found and what you need. So where you got your information can be from this manual, put it in your journal, as well as I highly recommend that you go online and do a little phosphate and water quality search and see if you can find some additional information regarding water quality or nitrates and water quality and do a search on that and see what kind of information you can um, glean off of the internet to help back up what you already know. In other words, you want to be an expert on just those two areas, which is kind of nice because when you think about it, there are nine water quality tests that are chemical tests that are done in the classroom along with a tenth test done. You're only responsible for these two tests. Once you become an expert in these areas, you can then share that information with the rest of the class and with your team members so that we get a big picture of the water quality. So you're doing one small aspect. Other students are studying things like fecal coliform, or they're just study, studying the dissolved oxygen content, or they're looking at the benthic macroinvertebrates that live there, and you're just focusing on the phosphate and nitrate content of the river. So that's how you get your background information. I would like to um, just give you a little bit of background information on phosphates and nitrates before you actually get the details from the textbook or off the internet. Um, first thing I'd like to tell you is that phosphates and nitrates are, are important nutrients for living organisms. Uh, we use them for the building blocks of our, our um, mo molecules that make up living organisms. So you'll find phosphates and nitrates in um, almost all the molecules of life. Uh, you'll find them in proteins, which is what we are made out of, and you'll find them in nucleic acids or DNA and RNA, which are needed for um, the transfer of information from cell to cell and from living organism to living organism, as in how it works. So nitrates and phosphates are not necessarily bad things, but in a river, the nitrates and phosphates should be contained in the living organisms, not in the water itself. When you find too many nitrates or phosphates in a water sample, this is not good for the environment, simply because there's an excess abundance of these, and what will happen is it will set off a whole chain reaction of events called eutrophication, which is a premature aging of the body of water and a reduction in the dissolved oxygen. 
reduction in the dissolved oxygen should be kind of set off a flare for you that that's kind of important. Oxygen is important for almost all living organisms and when the oxygen goes down it compromises the organism's ability to survive in an ecosystem. So we need phosphates and nitrates in our bodies and so do other organisms but they don't need this abundance in the water because what happens is it starts a chain reaction that diminishes the oxygen level. You'll find that in detail when you research it and read it in the water quality manual on how that set of st steps evolves and goes along. So um, that's one thing about phosphates and nitrates. So we look for them using test kits in uh, water quality analysis. We have specific test kits that measure the amount of phosphate and nitrate in the water. And as I said, they should be in the living organisms and not in the water. Um, sources for excess phosphates and nitrates could be um, from some sort of uh, manufacturing from industry that releases them into the water or perhaps from agricultural runoff which is one of their primary sources or sewage treatment plants that aren't functioning properly or uh, runoff from waste in uh, open fields that then goes into the river. Uh, remember anything we put on the land ultimately kind of runs into the river when there's any sort of rain event it washes it off and puts it in the river. So um, one of the things that phosphates and nitrates is found in is fertilizer since it's an essential nutrient for organisms phosphates and nitrates are put in fertilizers and then if those fertilizers get washed off the grass very quickly if there's a major rain event that will add the phosphates and ni nitrates into the water and then they will cause a problem in the water because they do the same thing in the water that they do on land they promote plant growth and too much plant growth can throw an ecosystem out of whack so it's kind of interesting how that happens and those are some of the general sources of phosphates and nitrates that you need to be aware of. Um, sewage treatment plants, you know that fertilizer back in through history came from uh, the waste products of animals. They used, used horse manure and cow manure as a, as a big time um, fertilizer that they'd work into the soil. Well, if you have an agricultural feedlot with thousands of heads of cattle on it and they are doing their cattle thing, that waste can then run off into rivers and streams and in an abundance, in an intense amount when you have thousands of heads of cattle and no sewage treatment plant for them, they're producing a lot of phosphates and nitrates that end up in the river and then again compromise the water quality. So what we want to do is when we go down to the river we want to collect our water samples and test them for the presence of phosphates and nitrates in the water. The results you get will be, be in milligrams per liter. And another way of thinking of how many milligrams of product are in the water per liter is thinking of parts per million. Because one milligram per one liter of water is roughly one part per million. And we have acceptable levels of nitrates and phosphates in the water and unacceptable levels of nitrates and phosphates in the water. And what we want to see is at that particular time in October when we go down to the river and do the water quality testing what is the level of nitrates and phosphates in the water in milligrams per liter or parts, uh, uh, parts per million. So one of the things that you want to record now in your journal is that we record the amount of nitrates in an environment or the amount of phosphates in an environment in milligrams per liter and that will be what we will evaluate and you will learn what an acceptable level is and an unacceptable level is. So this concludes this portion of the tape on background information, where you get the background information, how you go about obtaining it and putting it in your journal. I wouldn't suggest that you write, you know, volumes and volumes, you know, 20 pages of information. Look for the main sources, look for the causes of phosphates and nitrates and the problems associated with excess phosphates and nitrates in the water. What is the chain reaction that excess phosphates and nitrates set off? What is this thing called cultural eutrophication? How does it happen? And what is the ultimate end result of cultural eutrophication in an environment?